After three years of waiting, we finally got the release date for Dragon Quest 3 HD. Like many others out there, I was twiddling my thumbs waiting on some more information and here we are. The game comes out November 14th, literally right around the corner, and the more gameplay I see, the more excited I'm getting for it. With more and more Western fans catching on to the Dragon Quest craze, it's nice to see the older games get a fresh coat of paint. We're getting new jobs, full symphonic soundtrack, that's a big deal, trust me. We got different difficulty modes, including the legendary Draconian quest, the ability to toggle battle speeds, that's a big deal, trust me. Voice acting, new story content, and with Dragon Quest 1 and 2 HD coming out next year, it sounds like we got a good bit of Dragon Quest content to hold us over until Dragon Quest 12 comes out, eventually. Also shout out to the legend Akira Toriyama, this man gave us some incredible work, designing characters for Chrono Trigger, Dragon Quest, Blue Dragon, and of course he gave us the legendary series Dragon Ball. <laughs> You have given me countless hours of enjoyment and greatly contributed to my favorite RPG series, sir. May you rest in peace. It's looking really good to be an RPG fan in 2024. We got the Persona 3 Remake and SMT5 Vengeance re-released for consoles. We got Ayudin Chronicles, 100 Heroes, which looks beautiful and really invokes the old school JRPG feel, but with a lot of modern day mechanics. If you're into action RPGs, we got Dragon's Dogma 2 and Grand Blue Fantasy Relink earlier this year. Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven looks really interesting and different. In the original 1993 game, your character would have children and grow old and die, and you could have heirs to your throne. It's not a hundred clear what all systems will return in this version of the game, but I'm really intrigued. If you've completely lost faith in AAA games and you're more of an indie lover, Athenian Rhapsody might just be the game for you. Played this game last year during one of Steam's next fests and I really loved it. The game's hilarious, it's colorful, it's creative, and it's inspired heavily by Undertale, but in a really great way. It's currently very positive on Steam, so I would definitely check it out. But if there's one RPG that really has my attention, it's this year's Metaphor Refantasio. Atlas have really cemented their place in the gaming world with Persona and SMT series, so it's nice to see them take a chance with something new. The last time I saw them take a chance with something was Catherine in 2011, and the game was definitely different. Yeah, that's not I love the idea of the world being set in a fantasy setting. I know many fans, including myself, kind of have gotten bored with the high school settings of the Persona series and the more apocalyptic world of SMT, so the change is very welcome. The character designs seem to be so different from anything we've seen in an Atlas game so far. The game seems to be centered around politics and aligning yourself with not only powerful allies, but allies who align with your views. Based on the trailers, it looks like a lot of war and death and betrayal and just a really good time. I love the mix of turn-based combat with the light action RPG mechanics, also the cutscenes, my god it's just anime quality. Metaphor with Fantasio just might have game of the year potential, but we just have to wait till October 11th and see. What a jam-packed year for RPG games, and some of the best games are still yet to come this year. But what do you think? What game are you most excited for, and why is it Metaphor with Fantasio? Leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe, we're on the road to 1k, I'll see you next time, peace. It's just the broken, the school's closed, the prison's open We ain't got nothing to lose, motherfucker, we rollin'